The Cube at Hadoop Summit 2014 is brought to you by anchor sponsor Hortonworks. We do Hadoop. And headline sponsor, WAN Disco. We make Hadoop invincible. Okay, welcome back everyone. We're here live in Silicon Valley in San Jose for Hadoop Summit 2014. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com. We're with Jeff Frick, general manager of our Cube business and commentating here in Silicon Valley. Herb Knudsen, the president of Hortonworks, is our guest, Cube alumni. He runs the show, makes the trains run on time, you and Rob <laughs> Bearden and your team. Uh, really amazing what you guys have done um, you know, coming into mm -hmm. the market. Going back, we had a Yahoo guy on yesterday, senior vice president, talking about mm -hmm. the impact of how good Hadoop has been as an ecosystem from the days coming out of Yahoo, Hortonworks as a company. You guys got your wings, mm -hmm. uh, the market's on fire, um, the growth is phenomenal, uh, and your show here, is about serious business, mm -hmm. yet people are still collaborating, still got that vibe of a, a still a young industry. So what's your take on that? How young are we still? I mean, obviously the business going on. Mm -hmm. what's, your, what's your view on this market right now? Yeah, it's, it's a great question, John. First of all, thank you for having me on theCUBE again. It's always great to be here. I appreciate the show you guys run, so it's always good to be thank here. You. Our pleasure. But um, what we're seeing in the market right now, and I think some of the guys said it yesterday, like even Merv Adrian with Gartner, which is Hadoop has come a long way, but it's still so early on in the cycle in terms of what the possibilities are. And what really changed all that was last year as Apache Yarn came out into the market, now you're starting to see, and Merv said it really well yesterday from Gartner, that Hadoop 2.0, that was not only the inflection point, that's really the beginning of Hadoop. That's the beginning of enterprise Hadoop. As this market moves away from what could I do around batch analytics to what are the possibilities, which almost become endless, if I can use this as a true data platform for both economic savings and other data monetization opportunities. That's very different than what we've seen before. The other thing Merv mentioned was in our quote here, just quoted from our crowd chat. If you have any questions, go to crowdchat.net slash Hadoop Summit. We'll answer your questions with following along. He says, uh, maturization cycles take 10 years for big inflection points like big data. Um, so we are early, he did comment on that. Then he said, uh, it's not a blunt instrument. Um, it's a sophisticated stack that supports many use cases. So mm -hmm. he's talking about the old positioning of, oh, Hadoop is just a pile of data. Mm -hmm to know it's sophisticated nuance. Can you explain what he means by that? Sure, and this goes back to, you know, as you, as you lay it, what Hadoop needed, if you look back a couple years ago, right, was Hadoop needed an operating system to say, how can I go control all these resources and do more, right, than just batch analytics? And with that, as Yarn came out, then it opened up the possibilities of, okay, how can I stream data into the platform? Right? And there was a great demo on this morning on one of the keynotes where they showed a series of you know, trucks and where those trucks are by GPS and location, and I want to stream in data of different violations around what's happening with those trucks through storm and other things, and I want to manage all that in the platform. Now I want to query right now, this second, and I want to get a result back in a second or two against all of these trucks that are running, and I want to make a decision, and I want to go impact the movement of that truck out there. That's a real-time platform. You're moving in the whole world of complex events processing, real-time platform, totally different from where it was before. That's where we're going. So Jeff and I were talking on our intro segment this morning about how serious this business has become when you start hearing legacy Hadoop, or I forget what they said on stage yesterday, the, the previous version. I mean, it's not that young. It's not that legacy, like the old These version. are dog ears, John. Yeah, <laughs> dog ears. But in here, we have three segmentations of, of, of players here in the mm -hmm. ecosystem. You have your startups through Series B, Series C funding to pre-IPO, and you have public companies. So the whales, the tunas, and the minnows. I mean, if you want to call okay. it a fish analogy. <laughs> you know, Cisco's here, Intel, IBM. Mm -hmm. You know, they're looking to look at companies, who they're going to buy, who's going to partner with, so a lot of biz dev going there. The other companies looking for funding. What does that mean to you guys, as, as stewards of this ecosystem in Hadoop? You guys are the leader mm -hmm. uh, in, in the open source community. How do you manage that? Because now you have the big whales in here. Everyone's in the sandbox. What's your, how, do you, how do you deal with that? How do you foster more collaboration mm -hmm. and more innovation? It's a great question, and it's actually, that's, What's interesting about this is we, I'll say it this way, we bet right a couple of years ago in the thought process around this, which is if Hadoop becomes a central component of a data architecture, which it is, that all the whales and all the big companies will want to participate because the market's large, there's a lot of money, and everybody wants to monetize components of that. And the whole goal from the very beginning is if we become the platform for Apache Hadoop and to do everything through open source and work through Apache Hadoop and become um, a great substrate, in effect, a data utility, right, that you can look at. What that allows is everyone else, the whales, 
to go monetize on top through analytics, through integration, and through lots of other ways, the things that they've done well, and work with that substrate, work with that platform. And now you're starting to see as the market's become more mature, more mature, those companies are entering the market with different solutions. You saw many of them, yeah. Microsoft, Red Hat, and others, right on stage talking about it in the last couple of days. Herb, you know, we talked before we came on, we'd love to smile, talk about the, uh, the competition, the FUD, and the, all this conversation, but you know, at the end of the day, there's a lot of money at, uh, on the table, and there's a lot for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, you know, MapR has been criticized. Oh, those one of the guys, they got 500 customers and they're spending their employee base. You guys are doing extremely well. Mm -hmm. You got Intel working with, with Cloudera. The swim lanes are being established. How do you talk to people when they ask you the, the, that question, the big three guys, um, Hortonworks, MapR, and Cloudera? When you, when you, when they used to talk about that, what do you, how do you talk about those swim lanes? Because there's a lot of discussion. Obviously, you guys announced your acquisition in the security space. Mm -hmm. Cloudera followed that with a move. Mm -hmm. They partnered with Intel. You guys have your partnerships. How do you talk about the competition? Yeah, so it's a great question. Customers ask that all the time because they want to understand what the difference is. Um, and what we look at and say is, for us, we've been pretty consistent in what our strategy and approach has been and what the business model is, which is do everything in open source, make Apache, Hadoop, enterprise viable, and go help work with the ecosystem to make Hadoop a viable component of it and don't compete with the ecosystem. And what we're seeing is that's actually bringing the ecosystem, many of the whales that you described, together onto a common strategy where they want to start to contribute both development resources into that model, right, and they want to actually, you know, whether it's Microsoft or SAP or IBM, they say, I'm going to help contribute to open source and they may even want to go resell this as part of their platforms. And you're seeing that with a number of partners. That's what's driving it. And what we're seeing is as customers ask that question, they say, it's actually a year or two ago, this was a harder question because we all looked very similar. We, we did. Now, actually, we're diverging greatly. We are actually very different in approaches and strategies in terms of how we're going after this market. And whether it's work with the ecosystem or compete with the ecosystem, or whether it's do it all in open source or try to monetize other components around the top, I think we've been pretty consistent yeah. on that and it's actually become easier for customers to say, I now can see a bigger difference, now it's which choice do I want? Yeah, at some point people got to hang their shingle out mm -hmm. and be who they are, put a stake in the ground and say, okay, we're going to pick a strategy mm -hmm. and we're going to ride that straight and narrow. Mm -hmm. And we keep hearing this over and over because we do a lot of open source shows, right? And it's invariably, it's the little community that gets going and then eventually they get some traction and then the big wheels come in and there's always this conversation, you know, can we maintain the open sourceness? Can we maintain the innovation and the purity? Or are we going to get polluted when mm -hmm. you know, HP and IBM and, and those types of folks come in? So mm -hmm. is it getting easier to manage that? Or are people getting more used to that kind of dichotomy of, of being able to straddle both sides of the thing? I think the larger companies are getting more comfortable working in that open source world and contributing to it. I mean, you, can, you can see it with many of the companies that are on stage in the last couple of days, right? Microsoft talking about contributing tens of thousands of lines of code to Apache Hive to make it more performant so the entire ecosystem of Hadoop users can prosper. Now, for Microsoft, that makes all their tooling run faster on top. It's great for them, but it's great for the entire market for them to take their expertise. They're far more comfortable, and many companies are far more comfortable doing that. It's actually, we're seeing this model, and I liken it to, if you think of an analogy, it's the Peloton, it's the bicycle Peloton. And as the Peloton keeps getting bigger and bigger, right, and it's moving in a certain direction, right. yeah, somebody's going to try to break away. But what happens inevitably is they're climbing the hill in the Tour de France as somebody breaks away from the Peloton. It catches up. Right. And it's the same thing, if you've got enough people working together, you're going to catch any breakaway. Well, the, just the proven innovation model of open source is just fascinating when you get an engaged, enthusiastic community actively solving problems together at mm -hmm. a really rapid pace. Mm -hmm. it seems to be a So I got to ask model. you the open source question that brings it up. We were, had the same conversation at OpenStack Summit uh, in Atlanta, which is more cloud focused, obviously, but there's some, there's some big data will snoop, certainly sneak its way in there when the data virtualization conversation starts kicking in next year. So, so I got to ask you, as an executive, it's all about mm -hmm. metrics. Mm -hmm. And we asked Merv the same question, certainly Tony Baer and Dave Vellante and Jeff Kelly the same question. Look at, what point do the metrics start to show themselves where you say that's a real industry? Is it total addressable market? Is it market share, revenue? What do you view as the metrics that, that start showing up on the leaderboard when you say this is a real growing industry? I'd say it's a couple. So there's the total addressable market. You go by different analysts, IDC and others, they say, Big data, $100 billion market, Hadoop, 50 billion of it, et cetera. So that's out there today, right? But I think what separates it is you say, customer adoption, partner adoption, and real use cases. And that's what's different on this show, I think, is you're starting to see a lot of real use cases, right? You've had some of the folks on here, like TrueCar and others, that talk through what they're doing and the opportunity of how they can go grow their business. We're seeing those real use cases happen. 
Let's talk about TrueCar because that was a very fascinating conversation as they went public and they're a greenfield opportunity for big data. Mm -hmm. um, and take us through what they did because I think your 2.0 comment you mentioned is interesting. So they had an interesting trajectory. Can you share that story about how they really hit that tipping point mm -hmm. in terms of value and what that, what, yeah. what that did for their business? I mean, TrueCar is a great example of a company that's come out you know, more recently and they actually just went public recently very successfully but they built their entire infrastructure on Apache Hadoop, right? And we worked very closely with them from early on as they built this out. They didn't have legacy involved, right? They got to start from scratch. They are the perfect example of a company that monetizes data, right? Data around what's happening with car prices and car and inventory and other things, and they're able to go monetize that at scale and create an entire business model around that, highly successful, and provide a great service to the market. Very different from what you've seen in other places before. So we got some comments here. What is the direction of Hadoop development going forward? The direction of Hadoop development? Yeah. If we can continue to make Hadoop a unification platform, to say with Yarn and now with all of the components around this, can we make it a place to unify ways you want to access all that data and make it simple and easy that as somebody else comes out with a great new way to analyze data and they want to go work with what's running inside of the Hadoop platform, make that simple to access it and immediately as you plug one of those engines in, let it take advantage of all the core services of the platform. Security, governance, operations, deployability, being able to run it on-premise, off-premise, have all that happen automatically. That's where it's going. So we got some, uh, I'm getting some text here. So it says, trending now to do some at Hive, Apache, Yarn, HBase, Tez, and Storm. Make sense of that for folks out there. What does all that stuff mean? So all of those are great ways of accessing the data. So if you've got Hadoop and you've got HDFS and an elastic scalable storage layer, now you've got Yarn as the operating system. Now I want to go, I want to go access through an interactive query. I'm going to use Hive as a query into Tez. Now I want to stream data into the platform, continuous data just streaming in through Apache Storm. And I want to make sense of it and use Yarn to go make sense of it. That's, those are different ways to access that data. All the data in one place, different ways to access it based on your business model. The uh, couple, last couple questions I want to get to you quickly, I know you got to go, is that SQL has been a gateway drug, as um, Tony <laughs> mentioned this morning, for the enterprise. It makes things easy to use. Um, you're starting to see adoption, you mentioned a few of them. Uh, what, what things are you seeing where um, resource management's been a big issue, and Yarn in particular, I want to ask you the question, what have you seen with Yarn that has been uh, really surprising to you? It's been a great success, this idea of a data platform has enabled a new construction and enablement, you mm -hmm. mentioned TrueCar. What about Yarn has made it really, uh, what, what's impressed you the most about the Yarn success? Um, what's impressed me the most is how the rest of the ecosystem is responding to say, I want to be able to now plug into that. So can you help make it easy for me to go plug into that substrate? So whether it's through Tez for interactive type of workloads, whether it's through what was announced here, Apache Slider as a way for always on workloads like streaming. Make it easy, so give me the easy way to plug in. I want the easy button, big red easy button. I want to hit it, and I just want to plug right in and make sure that I can now leverage that platform. And seeing that actually work and take off, and you saw yesterday AT&T announced, right, that they're working with Continuity and they're putting out Jetstream, which is their streaming platform, and they're putting it all out into open source, it all plugs into Yarn. So what you're basically saying to answer that other question earlier, ease of use is the direction for Hindu. Huge, the easy big button. time, absolutely. Okay, final, final question, what's going on at Hortonworks for you guys? Employee, headcount, funding, are you going to do a monster zillion dollar uh, private equity round? Mm -hmm. uh, Tell us your M&A strategy. No, I'm <laughs> <laughs> So we've been doing very well as a business, right? We, you know, in the last year, we gained over 250 customers. We're growing 50 to 80 customers a quarter. Doing really well growing the business, right? Built on a very sustainable model, built on renewing customers. And at the end of the day, what we have to do is we have to keep them happy and successful. Because ultimately, we're just trying to monetize customer sat and make sure they're successful in that. That model has worked very well. Company's grown, we're you know, close to 400 people. We're continuing to scale out across all aspects of the company and it's a, it's a rosy future, we're you looking know, forward you know, to it. Jeff, I was talking last night to the Map R guys and, and um, you know, this whole metrics thing, we're really watching the metrics, so Jeff Kelly, Dave Vellante, and Jeff and I are looking at the metrics and trying to look at what are the good metrics um, to clear out the FUD that's been flying around. To me, it's about uh, employee headcount and revenue because those are two numbers mm -hmm. show healthy growth. Mm -hmm. And uh, you guys have done extremely well, congratulations. Uh, and um, in this industry is still, still young. So, final question. How big do you really think it's going to be? What will be the preferred outcome of this industry? I mean, if we're early days, like, mm -hmm. like Murph said, and you agree, we all agree, 
What's it going to look like in the 10 year horizon in your mind? Look, paint the picture of the 10 years out, what this is going to look like and compared to other industries. If you take, and I'm going to go back to something that Trucar said in their presentation, if you take the economics of being able to run workloads and going from $19 down to 23 cents, that has an impact that's driving as a center of gravity for workloads to go run in this environment, and we're seeing that. So that's only going to continue to grow, and the pace of data volume is only going to continue to grow. So you've got all the right trend lines moving in the direction of this is the right platform, more data is going to onboard, and more and more companies are going to use it. So I, what I really believe is this market will spawn you know, one or more billion dollar companies who are going to support that market and going to do that. And Clearly we have an aim to be that. It will disrupt others too. People who don't react, right? But there's, I mean, <laughs> every market, yes. So this is, that's what makes these markets fun. I love this market, it's very disruptive. This is theCUBE, we're here with the president of Hortonworks. Uh, breaking down the show here, the ecosystem, it's open, it's friendly, but it's all mm. serious, all business. It's about business outcomes and growth. This is theCUBE, extracting the signal from the noise. Mm -hmm. We'll be right back with our next guest after the short break.